Hello everyone and welcome to Dynomics. In this video we're going to cover the setup, normalization, and bad hole ID and repair modules. Let's get started. At this point you should have already created your petrophysical interpretation and set your key well. And we would also want to make sure that our key well is our active well as we're going to be setting some parameters and we want to make sure that all the subsequent wells in our project can inherit these properties from the key well. In this video I'm going to be referring to the drop down selection menu or module selection menu and that's what's located here in the top center and this is where we select the petrophysical interpretation modules that we wish, wish to use. Within the dynamics workflow there are essentially two parts to the workflow. First is getting your data ready to interpret so that's doing all the data processing and cleanup and the second is the actual petrophysical interpretation itself. When we talk about getting our data interpretation ready within Dynomics, that means to performing the operations here in these first few modules. <clears throat> so we're going to start in the setup module. If you're not currently on it, let's select setup. Within the setup module, there are generally only a few parameters that you'll need to change. So the most important thing that we do here in this module is we select the uh, top and base of the statistics window. We use the statistics window uh, to generate statistics internally that we'll then use for things like curve normalization and bad hole ID and repair. In many cases you'll find that in your well logs you may have areas that have unconsolidated sediments or that are not representative of your formations of interest. In this case, you may wish to do what the default behavior is, which is to set your statistics window to be relative to the first formation top. In this case, I have a value of minus 100 by default, which is saying let's use all data 100 feet above our formation top as the top of our statistics window. And in general, you'll want to set the base of your statistics window to be the end of available data. For most of these other parameters, uh, you can generally leave these on the default. The one exception to this is the inferred lithology. By default, Dynomics assumes that everything has been uh, logged in a limestone lithological reference unless it's specified uh, by the curve name. Um, now this is often not the case. In this case you can specify a lithology. Here in the Powder River Basin we know that most of our wells have been logged in sandstone units. Therefore I will set this to be sandstone. Okay that's it for the setup module. Next we have the curve editing module. Curve editing allows you to perform very granular uh, changes to the curves. It allows you to set curve priority, allows you to null specific uh, areas of curves, and also it gives you the ability to uh, change the scale on your curves. We're going to cover this in more detail in a separate video, and we're going to skip over this for now and move to normalization. So we'll select curve normalization from the central drop down menu. In Dynomics, there are a few different curve normalization methods. If we click on the tooltip icon, it'll bring up a list of these. So we have an option for a simple shift. A simple shift will align uh, all of your curve data along a selected percentile. A uh, simple scaling will scale the data to your uh, key well and along two percentiles. An advanced three-point scaler will align your data on a low, mid, and high percentile. And then finally, scaling to fixed range allows you to uh, scale your data relative to absolute values. <clears throat> so for this example, we're going to normalize our gamma ray based on our key well. So all normalizations are performed relative to the key well. And we're going to select a simple scale. So when I do this, it will show me my gamma ray low percentile and high percentile values. By default, this is the 10th and 90th percentile. Let's say I wanted to change this to be 
the P5 and the P95. I could just enter that into the box here. You'll notice that nothing happens on this well, and that's because this is our key well. So the key well itself is not normalized, but subsequent wells are. So if I click on a non-key well here, I can now see some shading in between the original curve and my normalized curve. Let's click on another well. Once, now I can see blue shading. This indicates that my normalized curve has been shifted slightly higher. And this is based on the statistics from our key well in the statistics window that we set in the setup module. Now I'm going to go back to my key well. Okay, once I have, and I can set my normalization uh, for whichever curves I would like to. Um, there's really no limit here. Uh, let's say I wanted to set a simple shift for my SP curve. And let's say I wanted to align that along the P90, for example. We can do that here. So we can use whichever methods we want on whichever curves. Now, once we are satisfied with our normalization, we can move along to bad hole ID and repair. Here in the bad hole ID and repair, by default, we, we are flagging uh, washout for our density and our PE curves. And we only have one evaluation criterion, which is a minimum row B. Let's activate a few other criteria, such as our maximum row B, a D row criteria, and a rugosity max. You'll notice that as we set these, it will show more parameters here in our CPI parameters window. When we choose to set these parameters, we can do this in a number of ways. We can, of course, type values in here. Uh, so we can set our defaults, for example. Or we can come in and drag and drop. So let's say, for example, on the rugosity that we wanted to uh, manually set this zone by zone. We can go to the rugosity track and we can drag our uh, criteria over here and we see that it gets set in here. We could have always, of course, come in and type this. You'll notice these two are linked and when I change one, it changes the other and vice versa. So you'll notice that as we flag washout, that the curve is automatically repaired, where the original curve is shown in black and the repaired curve is shown in red. You'll often want to uh, pad your bad hole flag. What this does is it simply uh, adds samples to both the top and the base of the washout. And in some cases, you may wish to blend it with the repaired curve in which case the, there is an averaging that extends a few samples beyond the top and the base of each washout. Many users find that this offers a cleaner looking uh, result curve at the end of the day that doesn't have abrupt changes at the edge of uh, flagged washout intervals. If you wish, you can also flag bad hole for your neutron and your sonic curves. And if you're working in a basin that has coals or salts, you can add those as evaluation criteria. <clears throat> when you do this, you'll notice that it doesn't immediately flag anything as being coal or salt. However, it does give you a checkbox here where you can turn on that flag. And if any coals or salts are present uh, based on the criteria outlined below, they'll then be flagged uh, as that instead of washout. There are no salts in this basin, so I'm going to turn evaluate for salt off. Uh, with respect to the repair itself that, that's being done, if we zoom back in here, there are a few different methods that are available. These methods are to take no action on the data. In this case, you'll just have a washout flag. We can null the values in our, in our bad hole zones, which would set the uh, in this case, the density curve to have a null value. We can repair it with multilinear regression or with random forest. The multilinear regression and random forest models are automatically generated, so there's no parameters that you need to set for those. 
the software will automatically test every available model and apply the best one to your data. Once we've done this, you may want to QC your results, and the best way to perform a QC is through cross-sections. In this case, I'm going to pull up a cross-section of all my wells, so I clicked on the cross-section tab. I then come here and I choose which uh, template I would like to use. So here it says plot, and I'm going to choose my gamma ray normalization QC. What I can see is that I have some wells that have relatively large shifts and a lot of wells that have relatively small shifts that have been made. And if I wish to go in and, and look at a well to evaluate the normalization, I can come here and click on its API, which makes that my active well. And then I can come to my normalization module and establish is that normalization what I want or not. And of course, you can always make changes as needed here. For example, you could turn off the normalization for this one well and the normalization will still be active for all the other wells in your project. Let's take a look. So now here is our curve after we've turned normalization off and we can see that we're still normalizing other curves within the project. So that is one way to perform the QC and I find that quite effective. <clears throat> Similarly, you can QC your repair uh, in that using that method as well. So for example, here we have a template called row B repair QC. We're going to select that and this will show us and we're going to flatten here on the top, just make it a little bit easier. Here we can see how repairs have been made and how washout has been flagged across our area of interest. And in wells where there's been a substantial amount of washout flagged, you may wish to go in and inspect those wells manually. All right, that is it for this video. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, contact us at support at Thank you.